So the first thing to look at this morning is the left-hand air long drive assembly, rib assembly. So we've got, this is on W04. And uh, we've got two parts there, which is the uh, W0402 Aeronon rib and uh, the W0404 drive plate. And uh, we've just successfully located it. Um, drilled a couple of pilot holes to uh, Clico it in place. And now we're going to drill all the way around it and uh, take it from there. So first bit on the way. Here's the left hand end of the Aerolon skin. So on the top side we've marked a line about 65 and a half millimeters in from one edge and then uh, up to the apex there. And then on the other side, we've taken 83 and a half millimeters in from the edge and then drawn a line to join up with the 65 and a half millimeters in from the trailing edge. And then of course we've got to cut this side like that. So we're going to use the trusty Dremel to cut through this and uh, we'll see what it looks like when we offer it up against the wing. More in a minute. It's always an interesting process cutting <laughs> through sheet with the, uh, the Dremel um, saw but uh, there we go. It's cut off and um, the end is at an interesting angle. Next I'm looking at the counterbalance assembly and uh, this is a quite a tricky little thing to get right because it fits into a space in the wing um, and takes the counterbalance and it's got to be positioned correctly otherwise it will jam um, and obstruct the movement of the uh, aileron so uh, it's got to be done fairly accurately and at the moment I've got the parts here just started to drill some holes got to try and make sure that everything is square and to the drawing so um, we'll see what happens with this, but uh, they're about, uh, well, we, we use the little bracket that we made earlier and uh, these four main parts and uh, I'll let you know how we get on. So after a little bit of work, there are the counterbalance or three main parts of the counterbalance assembly ready to be riveted together. We've got the joining bracket there, which we did earlier, and then the two side assemblies, all drilled and uh, deburred, cleaned, and ready to rivet. So uh, off we go. And there it is, one Aerolon counterbalance assembly complete um, can't cut the uh, uh, lead yet because obviously I haven't finished the air on and apart from that the piece of lead they supplied is too short so I'm gonna have to find some more from somewhere but uh, yeah that took uh, about an hour and a half to uh, to drill it and uh, rivet it so there you go that's that well day one went very well spent about five hours um, in the workshop and achieved quite a lot 
uh, made the aileron drive horn assembly which is that one there and uh, that was looking good made the counterbalance assembly which has got uh, two ribs and uh, a little bracket and the counterbalance fixings obviously no counterbalance yet because uh, we can't cut the lead until we've assembled the entire aileron and the skin you have to cut a, a very jaunty angle in the end and that ties up with the end of the wing as it comes in and it has a hole for the uh, counterbalance assembly to go through and a notch out at this end for the uh, drive horn to come through as well and I've also drilled the hinge so we're all ready to actually start to put this together so the next thing to do is to mark out the skin for all the holes for the ribs and uh, so I'll be doing that next and drilling those and then once that's done we then have to drill through those into the ribs and uh, that's going to take a little while to uh, to get all that done so I'll busy off and spend a couple of hours today doing that and hopefully in a couple of hours we might have an assembled if not riveted aileron which would be good after eight hours or so over two days we're now at the stage where all the parts are assembled together in silver clee code um, yesterday we uh, drilled the um, skin and uh, drilled the ribs through the skin and uh, also fitted the hinge all the way along and uh, the tip which is always a complete nightmare um, but it's there it just needs a little trim of the skin uh, just to uh, tidy it up a bit um, but yeah so eight hours of work in total from the start gets you to this stage next I'm going to up drill it to uh, copper clico size for, to, for rivet size basically and uh, then strip it down deburr everything and then we'll be uh, ready to start riveting which will be great so we should have it done today another couple of hours should see it done more later so about half an hour of drilling and clecoing and um, it's up drilled to rivet size copper clee code and something to, uh, to just to mention is that drilling these holes by the side of the uh, counterbalance assembly and the ones in the middle of the counterbalance assembly and obviously the other side as well is almost impossible with a conventional drill so I've got a rather neat attachment that goes on my Dremel. I don't know people think that Dremels aren't real tools, but they do get you out of um, problems um, when you need to do something a bit odd. So I've got this drill attachment, flexible drill attachment, um, which I've put my drill bit in. And it is absolutely ideal for getting in and drilling 
these holes it even fits nicely in between the counterbalance halves so just a tip if you're having trouble drilling in odd places get one of these it uh, it fits onto my dremel 3000 um, and uh, i use it quite a lot for drilling in places that uh, you just can't get to or for that matter with the cutting disc um, for cutting in places that um, you just can't get to anyway copper key code up time to strip it down and um, deburr everything and then it'll be riveting time it's starting to look quite good now it's uh, all deburred, cleaned up, and reassembled. And uh, just checked it to make sure it's straight and level and not got a twist in it, and it is level. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, rivet it, which is the exciting bit. I like riveting it together because I've actually, when I've finished riveting it, I've finished the bit and I uh, feel I've achieved something. So, um, more a bit later on. 12 hours over three days, and I've finished the aileron. And there it is. It's attached to the wing, and uh, it fits. And uh, not only does it fit, it actually goes up and down as well look at that amazing i'm quite pleased with that um particularly as it lines up with the uh, top of the wing very nicely i'll lay that lay that across there you can see it's perfect awesome so um that's that little project complete and on to the flap next um, and uh, I've had a couple of um, people uh, put some comments in um, Russell Simonetta has asked uh, what about the other flap and uh, if you remember I had a bit of an issue with it it didn't line up with the top of the wing very well and uh, the answer to that, Russell, is I haven't really uh, come to a, uh, a definitive answer. I'm going to build this one and do it slightly different. Because what I want is the top surfaces all to line up. So that when the flaps are up and the aileron is uh, in a neutral position, uh, they all are one continuous line. Um, on the other wing, the flap was about four millimeters too high and didn't line up with the aileron at all. So, uh, if it's got to um, stick out slightly, I'd rather have it sticking out slightly on the underside. Uh, just to give you the heads up on that, if you drop the aileron down, you can see actually I didn't notice it on the other one but there's a little four millimeter difference there but of course when you're in straight and level flight it lines up perfectly um, it's only when the aileron's down that you get the slight bump on the bottom side the flap works the other way up and I think that's what's causing the problem is that uh, when it's in the fully up position, it's sitting just slightly proud of this surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the whole thing, the whole flap down so that it lines up perfectly with the aileron when it's in the neutral position. So I hope that answers your question, uh, Russell, and we'll wait to see uh, how it turns out. Now, of course, if I do that, I've then got to modify the other one, which is sitting up there at the moment on top of the shelves. 
and that's going to involve taking the um, hinge half off um, completely drilling out all 70 odd uh, rivets and then making a new hinge with the holes slightly in a different place so that it gives a slight offset to the position of the flap when it's on the wing so anyway i'm going to make this one the way i think it ought to be done and then we'll see so that's all for this week i think um i've got to do some work and um, we've got visitors arriving well we've got visitors here already um and i've uh, got a few jobs to do around the house so uh, the flap will have to wait for a few days um, and uh, I'll let you know what happens. Bye for now.